good evening, and welcome back to the Poe Museum. I've just been enjoying this wonderful work of art. You say it appears to just be some ordinary flower arrangement? No, take a closer look. It's actually composed entirely out of human hair. So that gives me an idea. Why don't tonight I profile a couple of my favorite locks of human hair from the Poe Museum's collection? On tonight's installment of The Curator's Crypt. The first lock of hair I'd like to show you belonged to Eliza White. You've probably never heard of her, but she was the daughter of Poe's boss, Thomas White, the owner of the Southern Literary Messenger, a magazine here in Richmond. Poe moved back to Richmond when he was 26 years old after having lived in Baltimore for a few years. And he was here to take up employment at the Messenger. And he and the 14-year-old Eliza immediately hit it off. And within a month, he published the poem Lines, written in an album, also known as to Eliza in the pages of the messenger. Now he didn't tell her he'd already written the poem to Eliza for his cousin Eliza, and of course he'd later retitled the poem to Francis, so it wasn't anything that was really specific to her, but it said they became fast friends and they shared a love of dancing, and they could be seen dancing together at the local balls, and they became lifelong friends. When Poe got married the following year, she and her father attended the wedding. And after Poe moved up to the Bronx, she visited him twice up there. So she was always a supporter of his. She never married. She was a poet herself, so she continued to publish her poetry and also made a living as a music instructor. In the 1850s, she started reciting poetry by Shakespeare and other famous poets on stage. But when that didn't work out, she went back to being a music instructor, something she really hated. In her later years, she gave this lock of her hair to her niece. And it's said that her niece used to wear this braided into her own hair. And it's by way of her niece that the lock eventually came to the Poe Museum. Now, we don't get very many opportunities to show this. So you're getting to see something that not all the visitors to the museum actually get a chance to see. Now I'm going to show you my favorite lock of hair at the museum. Was it ever any surprise? Of course, I was talking about Edgar Allan Poe's hair. This little lock of hair was cut from his brow after his death by his friend and physician, Joseph Snodgrass, the man who found Poe at a Baltimore polling place dressed in somebody else's clothes and took him to a hospital. This is a guy who was with Poe in the last days of his life, actually attended Poe's funeral. It was one of seven people who attended Poe's funeral. But when Poe was lying in state at his uncle Henry Herring's house, it's said that people from all over Baltimore showed up just to get locks of hair. And one observer said he was surprised that Poe had any hair left by the time they were finished. But this is the one that Snodgrass kept. Now, did I mention that after Poe died, Snodgrass actually earned a living traveling the country, giving lectures about Poe's death. He was a big temperance advocate. He was trying to get alcohol banned, and he was using Poe as the poster boy for the dangers of alcohol. At the same time, Poe's attending physician was also traveling around giving lectures, saying that Poe wasn't drunk when he died. So who do you believe? Well, either way, we've still got this great lock of hair here. You just have to look really close to get a good look at it. It looks kind of like a daddy long legs. Well, thanks for joining us this week for my survey of some of the human hair here in the Poe Museum's collection. Now, at the beginning of this episode, I showed you a piece of artwork made entirely of human hair. 
So I want to let you at home guess just what this portrait of Edgar Allan Poe is made of. Did you figure it out? It's painted with human blood. The artist is Ryan Almighty, a California artist, who called us up and said, I've got a portrait of Poe in human blood. Would you be interested in it? And we said, of course, this is where it's going to be right at home. And our guests over the years have pointed out, and they've asked us, well, whose blood is it? Rest assured, no one was harmed in the creation of this painting. And we did ask the artist, and he sent us this picture of him with his blood donor. So it just goes to show you never know what you'll find on a visit to the Poe Museum. So thanks for joining us this week. And if you'd like to support the Poe Museum and access bonus content and see things that even visitors to the museum can't always see, become a patron by supporting the Poe Museum at patreon.com slash Poe Museum. And just know that you'll be supporting a worthy cause of illuminating Poe for everyone evermore.